Digging, Floria was about to give up when he stumbled upon an old rifle. Later, Floria's mother throws a fit after begging his son not to go and join the partisans. The matriarch knows full well that their young family is as good as dead if the invading Germans knew that Floria joined the resistance. Not soon after, members of the partisan wearing German uniforms arrive to come and get the young boy. Floria couldn't have been happier, he excitedly grabs the gun and his luggage and stands at attention. Meanwhile, the mother's attitude changed and was rather welcoming to the men. But she couldn't help but tear up at the thought that her only son would leave. To be safe, the partisan members dressed up as German soldiers and acted like they arrested the young boy for everybody to see. Floria's mother understands the situation and does her part in the act. Floria is then shoved in a wagon, and they depart. The young boy then takes one last look at his dear mother. Soon, Floria arrives at the Soviet resistance camp where a couple of hundred soldiers are stationed. While looking around the base, Floria joined up a goofy photoshoot with the Freedom Fighters. Later that night, Floria's first order is to watch a particular part of the camp. Being a rookie, he didn't do the job well and was instructed by the commander to guard for a few more hours. Floria wasn't a bit disappointed and is happy to do so. Hours later, his relief came, and he ordered the young man to take a rest. The following day, the high command gathered all members of the resistance army and ordered them to defend every territory. After briefing the men, the stoic commander then asks if anyone couldn't march. One member steps forward and states that he can't due to the conditions of his boots. And so, the commander orders him to swap boots with Floria. This devastates the young boy. He wanted to be part of the action, but swapping boots with the soldier meant that he'll be left at camp. Not soon after, the resistance army marches away from camp. Disappointed, Floria runs away in the opposite direction and starts sulking. But he wasn't alone. Floria hears someone crying from a distance and checks it out. He sees a beautiful young lady named, Glasha, crying her eyes out. Floria starts crying with her. But in an unexpected twist of events, they start laughing and get to know one another. While conversing, Glasha suddenly kisses the young boy, and almost immediately, Floria pushes Glasha away. Later, the two teenagers see a group of German paratroopers making their way down from the skies. It was followed by a bombardment. The shelling obliterates the Soviet base camp. Floria falls on deaf ears after the bombing and tries to look for his new friend. He saw a German soldier stuck in the trees when he looked up. Glasha then grabs Floria, and they run deep into the forest. After being shot at, the two unlikely friends hide in a crater and observe the German army from a distance. With pretty much nowhere to go, Floria gathers some woods and vegetation to create a makeshift shelter. After a while, Floria signals to Glasha to get in. They then sleep close next to each other for body warmth. Soon, the two head toward Floria's village in hopes of eating a warm meal and reuniting with Floria's mother and sisters. They soon arrive, and the village is eerily quiet. Not a single soul in sight. But Floria sees smoke coming out of their chimney, and so he figures that his mother and sisters might have left not too long ago. Floria then grabs a warm soup from the fireplace and offers it to eat. Glasha, on the other hand, notices an unusual number of flies at the table. Floria realizes that his family might be hiding somewhere close. Somewhere the Germans would never go. The young boy storms out of the house and starts to run towards the forest at the back. Glasha joins him, but she sees the pile of half-naked bodies piled up when she looks back. Glasha doesn't let his young companion look back, knowing full well that it would destroy him. The two almost drown after crossing a bog. Glasha tries to reason with Floria, but the teenage boy isn't listening. And so, Glasha breaks the news about the bodies she saw at the back of the house. Floria couldn't accept it, and gets upset. Out of frustration, Floria chokes Glasha and pushes her back into the bog. Immediately, Floria realizes the mistake and jumps in to save her. Moments later, a man sees the commotion and extends his arms to help Glasha. The man then guided the two teenagers to the refuge nearby. Hundreds of refugees were standing by, waiting for help. Some people in the crowd recognize Floria and tell him about his family's fate. That the Germans have killed his mother and sister in cold blood. The two stayed at the refugee camp for a few days. By that time, Floria had got his hair cut. Meanwhile, the other refugees start making a clay figure of Hitler spit at the said figure. Afterward, the abled men at the camp head out for a supply run. Floria joins them, leaving Glasha behind. The next day, they placed Clay Hitler at the middle of the crossroads to mock the invading Germans. After failing to get some supplies at the nearby warehouse, they head to another town to try and get some food for the folks back at the bog. Floria and another man make it across the road when they suddenly hear an explosion. Two of their companions died. Turns out the area they just crossed is a minefield. Later that night, Floria and his remaining companion held up a villager working with the Germans. They stole his cow at gunpoint and managed to get away with the cow in the cover of darkness. But they didn't make it far. The Germans fire a flare in the sky and start shooting in their direction. The first hail of bullets kills the other resistance fighter. Floria tried to check on his pal, 
but it was too late. The young boy then tries to escape with the cow, but the Germans start shooting again. This time it hits the cow dead. The young boy starts despairing, and due to fatigue, Floria falls asleep. Floria woke up and was surprised to see the heavy fog covering the area. He tries to get some meat from the cow but realizes it's useless. And so, he tries to look for something to carry the meat. Floria sees a horse with a wagon on its back. He tries to pull it away, but the owner stops the young man. The two starts arguing but are cut short when they hear an incoming truck. The old man helps Floria hide his guns and jacket under hay just in time for German troops to arrive. The old man then decides to help the boy further by bringing Floria to his home. On the way, the old man orients Floria to pretend to be a local. They soon reach the old man's village. At the same time, a whole German division soldier arrives. Meanwhile, the old man introduces Floria to his pretend family back at the house. Not soon after, a German soldier barges into the house and sits down at the table. The locals then start serving some food while the others keep quiet out of fear. Later, Floria hears a commotion outside and proceeds to check it out. He then sees hundreds of innocent villagers being rounded up. Floria warns the villagers not to go to the town square, but it is cut short when a German sympathizer grabs Floria by the face. The scene is chaotic. Unarmed women and children are forced to walk while the Nazi soldiers get intoxicated. Soon, every local was forced to get inside a building. The soldiers push in anybody who's not on their side. Some of the Russians have an idea of what's coming, so they try to push back. But it was all for naught. The soldiers overpower the villagers and lock up the wooden doors. Inside, hundreds of panicking innocent townsfolk. Among the people trapped in Floria. When a man tried to take a peek out the window, he was shot dead. Suddenly, another German sympathizer fires his shotgun to silence the crowd. A Nazi officer then peeks at the window from the outside and announces that they can get out, but they have to leave the children behind. The people inside hesitate, but Floria takes the opportunity to get out. As he looks outside, he sees hundreds of armed men awaiting orders. Floria also sees a Nazi general on board a jeep chatting with another officer. Back at the building, others start following Floria and jumping out the window. Later, a woman manages to climb out and catches a child when it is dropped out the window. Turns out the woman was Glasha. The soldiers then apprehend them and separate the two. The Germans then toss the child back at the building and drag Glasha by the hair. Not soon after, the massacre begins. The Nazis throw a couple of grenades inside the building. The people inside started crying out for help, but not a single Nazi soldier was phased by the slaughter. Instead, they continue by throwing Molotov bombs. A German sympathizer gets out of the building tower and slides down the roof amid the massacre. This prompted the Nazis to laugh and laugh at the randomness of the situation. Not soon after, the building starts catching fire. The people trapped inside tried hard to break the door open but couldn't. Screams of agony and pain echo throughout the town. The Nazi officer orders his men to shoot to silence them, and the Germans then spray the wooden building with bullets. And to make sure that everyone died a horrible death, the Germans used flamethrowers. Floria witnesses everything but can't do anything about it. Subsequently, the Germans start leaving. But before they left, they made sure to burn everything to the ground. Meanwhile, someone picks up Floria and shoves him to the ground. A Nazi officer then aims a pistol at the young boy's head. But they weren't going to kill Floria, they did it for a photo. As soon as they get their picture, they leave the boy to fend for himself. The last of the Germans left the town, but that doesn't mean they were finished with their atrocities. Dozens of Nazi soldiers throw Glasha on an ongoing truck and start molesting the poor girl. Another group of men carries a clueless bedridden elderly woman out in the open. Moments later, a traumatized Floria ends up in the forest. He sees a lot of dead Nazi troops from a fresh encounter but tries hard not to mind them. Instead, he picks up gauze and goes back to the hayfield to recover his rifle. As soon as Floria gets his gun back, he fixes up the broken part using the gauze. After a while, he hears a faint whistle and sees a bloodied Glasha just as traumatized as him. At this time, you can barely recognize the cheerful Floria and Glasha. It seems years were added to their age in the short span of time. It's revealed that the resistance army wiped out the Germans aside from a few prisoners. Among them were the Nazi general and his lackeys. The general pretended to be an innocent old man. Floria emerges from the back and reports that it was the same people who burned the town. One of the German officers admits his crimes but justifies that none of them have the right to live. The Nazi officer further explains that the German people are superior and should rule the world. Wanting revenge, Floria hands them a gallon of petrol. One of the German sympathizers pours the gas at the Nazi officers. But before the fire could light up, the Russian starts